Since I made my last rate video, things have changed a whole lot, and I've also learned a whole lot too. I'm not going to be talking about the PIDs here because I... I have not made my part two video of the PIDs because I just am not good at PID tuning. I kind of generally know what I need to do, but I, I'm not good enough for me to actually make a video. And now with the new beta flights and the new race flights and everything, everything flies so well just on stock that it's really, it's it's like, it's even harder to learn how to PID tune now than it was back in the day. Because back in the day, you had something that just flew like crap unless you had to tune it. You were forced to tune it. But now if it just doesn't fly right, you don't really know what to do. So I'm going to be making a video on that when I when I have a better understanding and I can, you know, enunciate it and verbalize it easier. But let's talk about just rates. Rates, I personally think rates are equally as important as the PID settings. And let's look at these three numbers. These are the three number the, these are the three primary numbers. First of all, don't focus on degree per second. That number is rather meaningless. If you go to race flight, the degree per second is totally different. Like my race flight rates are like the degree per second is like half of that. And uh, KISS, I don't even know if they have degree per second. I haven't used KISS in a long time. So don't focus on degree per second. Focus more on the stock and where you go from stock. Because race flight and beta flight have excellent stock settings already for racing. And KISS, I'm sure things have changed. I just haven't used KISS in a long time. The stock rates for beta flight and race flight are excellent for racing. For acrobatics, you probably want higher higher rates in general. But first, let's back up and look at the the uh, numbers on their own. So let's zero everything out, and you see here. So the first number, RC rate, is what modulates the middle area of the stick, the mid area of the stick. So what I mean by middle is this much of the stick. Well, everything is smooth together, but in general, it has the most effect on this much movement, this much movement. The RC Expo modulates the mid area of the stick. So this area, not like the middle, like the middle of the stick, like here, but when you're deflecting 100%, it modulates the mid section right around here. The Super Expo modulates the last end of the stick. And of course, not all of them are independent of each other. They all smooth together. So let's increase and change them and see what happens to the graph. So let's do our first do RC Expo. So the red line is what we're looking at. That's the roll axis. And let's increase it and see what happens. See, the red line is going up linearly. Don't look at the blue or the green. And don't worry about the thing jumping around. Just look at how the red line is going up linearly. And that's what it does. So it linearly changes the middle of the graph. So it's going to respond completely linearly to your finger movements. Now let's look at super rate. Super rate is supposed to modulate just the end area. But once you modulate this end area, it becomes asymptotic. It's going to smooth into the rest of the graph as well. So let's increase that. Just look at the red line again. Let's see what happens. Let's actually reduce this back down to one to make it easier to see. So there you go. So look right there. You see how it's curving really the end and then the rest is just responding to that curve. It has to smooth out. So it's becoming very, very asymptotic. So what you're seeing here, it means that the stick's going to be really, really soft around the middle. But as you go further and further out from the midline deflection, it's going to get crazy, crazy, crazy fast. That's what Super Rate does. Now let's look at RC Expo. Let's set this back to 2.3 to make it easier to see. So RC Expo is supposed to modulate just this area, this area, not the big, not the middle part, not the ending part, the mid area of the line. So let's see what that does. It curves it. So let's put this into layman's terms and, and uh, kind of like understand exactly what's going on. So the RC rate makes the mid area more sensitive. The RC Expo makes the center area more soft. It will also make the mid area more soft as well. And the super rate makes the end area more drastic. In the past, RC, uh, RC ex in the past, Expo has been very popular, but it's kind of fallen off. I don't really know why, but super rate has taken over. Super rate feels more natural. It just feels more natural to everybody. When you start adding RC Expo, things starting start to feel kind of weird. And originally, I think people thought that RC Expo was was a good thing, and it, it's what few humans felt as natural and good. But it seems like that's not the case, since it's kind of like fallen out of favor. So if you were to modulate your rates, I would say that don't touch the RC Expo at all. This is this is for the new pilot. If you're experienced, you already know what you're doing. This has nothing to do with you. If you're a new pilot, stock rates are pretty darn good. 
Don't touch RC Expo. Super rate. I would not recommend you touch that until you're a little bit intermediate and you understand what it exactly does. If you're a new pilot, you can experiment with it, but you're probably not going to be able to tell a huge difference because you're a new pilot. An RC Ray is the only one you should touch. So if you're a new pilot and you want things to move faster when you move the sticks around, just increase RC Ray. And don't do it by a lot. Just add like two or three numbers. It really does make a difference adding two or three numbers. So one thing you probably noticed is that my numbers are different here between my yaw, but my total graph looks similar. So most people like to have these lines match up. And the reason why that is helpful to me and most people is that when you're doing rolls, you're often doing something like this or something like this. And so because your camera's at an angle, you have to go like this to do a smooth centered roll. So when you have your rates even like this, then you just pull the sticks the same amount both directions and it just makes it really easy to get the rolls correct. So that's why I like my rates like that. But you'll also, that's why I like my rates, my, my graph curve very nice and even. But you'll notice that my RC rate is higher than my RC rate for roll and pitch, the yaw RC rate. And my super rate is lower to compensate for that. And the reason for that is because I'm a pincher. If you're a new pilot, I highly, highly recommend just trying pinching. I know it's really natural to just grab the controller and go with your thumbs. And a lot of excellent, excellent pilots are all thumbs. But for a new pilot, you're really going to be shaking on the sticks and having an extra finger to have all that extra proprioception makes it much easier to fly smoothly. And, and just force yourself to do it for two or three packs and you might be surprised, you might never even consider going back to thumbs again. To me, thumbs just feels super unstable. I started pinching when my hands were broken and I was learning to fly in casts because I physically could not hold the controller with thumbs. I had to rest it in my lap and use my, my pink fingers to pinch. And that really helped me improve the whole, I couldn't fly with thumbs before. The other thing about pinching is that when you're pinching, it's kind of difficult to move the stick all the way to the end of the, the deflection path. Like it's, it's hard to reach this top. For me to get to the top here, I really have to like move my finger, move my whole hand far. So pinchers generally seem to prefer higher rates because we don't really want to you know, do full deflection to do a flip or a roll. So yeah, take that into consideration. If you are pinching, you can probably tolerate slightly higher rates. This is not for everybody. This is, I'm not saying, you know, thumbers like lower rates or nothing, zero. I'm not saying anything against anybody. I'm just saying that if you pinch and you prefer pinching and it feels more, feels comfortable to you, consider trying higher rates. And the reason I'm saying that is because Higher rates can feel smoother, can be smoother than lower rates, especially when you're pinching. More on that later. So my yaw rate, my yaw rate is higher because for the same reason. I, I can't, for some reason, my left hand is, is broken and I, and I can't really move this yaw stick so far and move the gas up and down smoothly. So as I'm moving the gas up and down, it's my thumb that's doing the yaw. And this is not just me. Many other people have told me the same thing, that they prefer their yaw rate to be higher than their pitch and roll rate to compensate for the lack of their left hand being able to actually move the sticks all the way. Uh, when I realized that, I, my flying got a lot better. So like I said before, having high rates can potentially make you a much smoother pilot. And I know that some of the best pilots fly with really, really high rates. Uh, I know Schizo, I'm pretty sure Johnny Share. They both fly with really drastically high rates, and you can tell that in the movement of their quad too. And that's, I, th I would say that that's because when you're doing your flips and rolls, it's really easy to just like, you know, move the stick a little bit and then just hold it on the way back. So you're going to bounce the stick to the side and then move it back to the center, but you're not going to move it all the way back to the center. And the reason for that is if you put your stick in the center and you move it around, you'll notice that it's kind of notchy. It's, you can't smooth, like if you try to move diagonally, it's kind of hard to get that center to go through the center point of the stick like very smoothly you will always get a little hiccup like if i let go of the sticks it like bounces around the center it's not super smooth in the center you can't move it in a smooth circle if you were to map out the circle that you're drawing by just moving the sticks like this it's not going to be a circle because as you transition with the yaw with the stick deflected in the roll position as you transition the pitch from center, from uh, top to midline to bottom, you hit that notch in the middle. You can hear it. You hear that in middle notch? So because of that 
little notch in the middle, which we like, we want to know when our stick is in the center, you can fly much smoother and do much smoother moves if you kind of do a quick deflection and then do not go back to center. So you go quick deflection, hold it just out of center so the quad is still doing like a smooth move rotation. So you get a quick jerk and then smooth move rotation and then you slowly bring it back to center so nobody sees that you kind of like bounce through the midline. So that's that is the secret that I think a lot of really high-end pilots are doing to get a really nice smooth look that they probably don't notice that they're doing themselves. And that's what I do, and that's what I found that I do myself, and that's how I can kind of get, I'm not as smooth as anybody, but that's how I can kind of look like I'm smoother than I actually am. So again, that's a quick deflection to do your roll or flip or whatever move you're doing, and then slowly move it towards the center. What gets complicated is when you try to do a roll with a high camera tilt, where you have to pull the sticks opposite directions and then move and then you want to do a roll backwards the other way too. So then you got to move back and both of the sticks have to transition through the, through the midline at the same time. That's, that's a difficult thing to gauge and that's really come, just comes with experience. All right. So after all this, one of the thing that is a huge, huge point that I did not discuss before that, that you really should know is in beta flight, there's a new setting that's not really new anymore. It's been around for a long time. It's the PID2 system, which is the D set point and D transition. These two numbers are very, very, very important as I have learned recently. It's really hard to explain what these numbers do, but I'm going to try my best. So don't really read the names. The names don't mean much. They don't explain anything. And these tooltips also, they're not really, you can try reading them, but unless you've been using this stuff for years, you probably don't even understand what any of the words in here mean. What the D set point is, this is not correct. This is not an accurate explanation. It's just my best way of explaining it in words. The D set point is the responsiveness of the stick. Now, I know that doesn't really mean much, but what I'm going to tell you is that if you're flying a quad and it feels really super locked in, that's what the D set point will do. If you increase the D set point up to like 1.5, it's super tight. It, it's super, super responsive. So when you move your sticks around, when you move the stick around, it responds like really quick to your movements, really, really agile, and it almost feels nervous. It's a nervous level of response. Racers want that number super high. For acrobatics, you want it around one. One is going to be a one-to-one -one response to your stick. It's going to respond, they, they, both, they all respond fast, but it's going to feel like it responds the same as your fingers move. The problem is when you get below one, and the issue is that, look, here is default settings. So default settings for Betaflight, they've put the D set point at 0.6. To me, that feels super loose. It feels like the quad is not in control, and I don't like it. They put the transition at 1, which I'll explain next, but this this set point at, at point 0.6 is just not, It's it feels super loose. I highly, highly recommend you move that number up to at least 1, and I prefer 1.08 or 1.1. Just I really want the stick to feel like it's really connected to the quad, and, and when you're at 1, it feels like you're super connected to the quad. When you're past 1, when you're up at two or so it feels like the quad is is more connected to you it feels like you're the drone like it's it's controlling you it's moving faster than you are so let's keep that at one you can play with it and you know test it as you like but i highly recommend you keeping it at one or just a little above one if you're doing like really really smooth videography up high in the air not close to any objects then you can move it down to like 0.6, 0.7, 0.5, because then it just smooths out everything you do, and it just feels super flowy. So now let's look at the D set point transition. What the transition is, is how sharply it responds back from the movement you just did. So not just the movement of the initial move, it's the end move. So this is the initial, and then the end of my movement, which is where I stop, and how hard it zips to that line. What the D set point transition can do is, again, make it feel super nervous if it's up at one, or make it super soft if it's below one. This, the C D set point transition is a percentage of the D set point weight. I, I don't know if it's an actual percentage, but to me, in my experience, just playing with it, it feels like a percentage. 
and let's go back to my actual numbers. So if you look at my actual numbers, my set point weight is at 1 and my transition is at 0.4. And the reason it's at 0.4 is because I want it to be super soft when it zips back to my stopping point. So the quad, you know, the initial movement and then the stop. So initially, initiating the movement is, is going to be super sharp, super in control. But when it comes to a stop, I want it to be super soft. I don't want a hard, sharp, like, jerk. I don't want to jerk. I want it to be super smooth, super, super nice, super, like, silky. I don't want any jerky movements, but I want to feel in control. So I personally prefer my D set point weight around 1 or a little bit higher than 1, and my D set point transition lower than 1, around 0.4 to 0.6, because like, like I said, I want to feel in control, but I want the quad to be super smooth. Play with that. I hope that helps you helps give like an understanding of what these numbers do. The default settings are good if you're running default Betaflight 3.1.7 or 3.2, which this is 3.2. I highly recommend you change your, your set point to 1 and your transition, you know, just leave it at 1 or make it a little bit less than 1. I think you're going to have a much, much better flying experience. I don't know why they changed the numbers. Uh, the previous numbers before 3.1.7 were actually like this. They were 1 and then the set, the set point was below below 1. So I'm not sure why they flipped it around. I think because between the versions, they kind of flipped these two over. So before there was a version where the transition was on top of the set point weight and then the numbers were jumbled and I don't know what happened there. But put it back to 1 and 0.4. That's all I have for you now. I hope that was very helpful. Don't forget to floss.